Chris Harley gets it into the corner. Marchman has it. Rick shot. Score! He's got a pair. Mason Marchman, a sneaky wrister past Wedgwood. And it's 4-1 Dallas. In your face, Scott Wedgwood. The Stars are victorious 4-3. to three, And I kind of want to get some of your overreactions to the first game of the season. And here's what I'll tell you did not help me last night. Okay. That the Stars tweeted out, you can't get to 82-0 and 0 without winning the first one. <laughs> I got tagged in that on social media right. by so many freaking people. The other thing I learned last night is a lot of people were really mad that the season launched not on Victory Plus. So they have a very sexy 69 games on Victory Plus, nice. and the rest of them are national TV. And people were upset. They were like, oh, I still can't watch the stars. I mean, for this game, that's fair if you don't have Hulu or ESPN. But Victory Plus will get going, I believe, on Saturday. Okay. But a lot of people on social media were still frustrated because clearly Bally has burned – a lot of people en route to kind of restricting how much people can watch. Yeah, and what's really weird too, Kevin, is like uh, whenever it's on Hulu or TNT or something like that, I have to go to a different app to get okay. to, to get yeah, some yeah. of those games sometimes. So that's that's a little unique process for me. But all that really mattered last night was making sure that the Stars <laughs> solidified winning game one of the season. And I love that the Stars people are listening to the show. I do, you know, too. That, that's pretty clear that the Stars people are listening to the show. That's, uh, I really appreciate y'all out there, uh, Star Tolos. Now, if you look at the flow. Of Have you changed your mind, though, about how important game two no! is going to be? No! No! I, I mean, well, hold on. If I'm going to use y'all's logic, can I take it easy in game two? Because we won the, mo the must-win one in game one. Every game from here on now Every becomes game. more important as you win them. The thing that you got to get away from is putting pressure on each game. You just got to know the, the well, moment and rise up to it. How do you keep the pressure off? Because if you keep building just the another pressure, game. you're going to flame out like yeah, 30 games Just another games game that we have season. to win. Otherwise, we might as well quit. Okay, I will tell you this. I am super glad the Stars won. Did you think that was a game that the Stars should have won? Because, <laughs> like, if you look at the flow of play, if you look at how much Nashville was peppering the net, I got really concerned. However, it wasn't actually until the third period that they could really do much of anything. And then I realized they scored in the last, well, like, minute 45, two minutes to really put the heat on. But... The Stars were in control of this game from a score perspective, yeah. but it didn't necessarily feel like they were in control of this game otherwise. Yeah, and did you see uh, that uh, Ottinger had told Wedgwood when he signed with the Predators, hopefully I don't have to face you, and then here we are getting, having to face <laughs> in the Wedgwood first the first game of the season. game, and well, look, I mean, <laughs> didn't the Stars only have 20 shots, yeah. and Wedgwood gave up four goals, so... So I'll tell you what, Kevin, here, I will concede this, all right? Now, that Alec, I think we do need to concede this. Maybe not. At some point, it's going to be difficult to win all of them, all right? And Aww. you really do. You want to be able to, to build to something. But what if the Stars started at their best and built to the best? You know, we always see teams that start hot and then just fall off the face of the earth. What if they just never stop? You know, what if they go touch the sun or something? That would be amazing. Then they're going to win the cup? Yeah. Yes. I, what I also liked about this game, too, is how many different people scored that, that are important to what the Stars do. Robertson gets a goal. Like, the, and that's somebody you would brought up, well, not just yesterday, but yesterday as well. I have a lot of, a lot of things I want. Like, I understand how good Jason Robertson is. It, you can use the word great if you'd like to. He had a phenomenal season a couple years ago. Last year was really good, but as you said, he set the bar too high. You know, he, he may have set the bar way way too high for even himself to go back to and be that consistent all the time. But seeing what he, you know, what he's capable of, that's why I'm so hard on him because he has that ability. He has all, all these all these qualities and traits that make him a great star. But he, I want a little more speed, which you can't. He can't just be faster. Sure. I, if he's not going to be that, I want a little more physicality from him. But he's a finesse guy, and that's the that's the thing from him. I love the. I think it was. I think it was uh, our boy uh, Slim Scotty uh, that that said it yes. once. Joey Erickson said he has a computer in his brain, uh, just the way that he sees the game and makes passes and is able to to decipher what he's supposed to do. I would like to talk about Logan Stankoven, who had not one, not two, but three assists. That puts him on pace for a robust 246 assists for the season, which would break the record 
probably by less than you think. The record is held by Wayne Gretzky, who in 85-86 season had 163 assists. Holy crap. So he averaged two assists. Who was the leading score goal goal scorer on that team? That's a good question. Probably, I don't know, Messier or Yari Curry. Gretzky. He had the yeah, most assists. That was and probably most Gretzky, yeah. too. That's a good point. <laughs> but, like, he averaged two assists a game. I'm just really excited because a couple of the things that we talked about, you talked about, you know, how much experience the team has lost. First look at Logan Stankoven. He could be there to help out for all the goals. Can Jason Robertson bounce back to being a 100-point scorer or in that vicinity? Boom, scores a goal in the very first game. There were a lot of things to like from that perspective. And Jake Ottinger played really well. Yeah, because of the way that Stankoven plays, he's un very unselfish. Well. And this team is very unselfish, right? Like, they don't, they don't seem to be. Sense. It has to be all on me because they understand that they are a team. You, that's why I keep talking about the I really want that one dude to step out because I know that he won't be selfish, whoever it is on that on that team. And maybe it is Robertson, but Stankoven has, does such a good job of getting in there, getting loose pucks, making plays happen. He's quick, he's fast, he's strong. Even for the, the little guy that he is, he's got a lot of strength that allows him to set other guys up. Hence, as you brought up, you think he needs to be that guy, that stud, that stud center for this team. But by the way, they like – helped that process along by saying you're going to be one of the assistant captains, right? Yep. So, like, the money says it, the A on his sweater says it, and he knows it, like, yeah. obviously. Yeah, and he knows what his talent and skill set is and what he needs to continue working on. And then I brought up the name Marchment yesterday. I need more out of him, too. This whole season in the playoffs, I need I need a different type of, uh, of Marchment. When he's with Duchesne, they do some special stuff, but I need Marchment to be a different guy. I don't imagine that could have gone much better for you yesterday, nah, it was then. great. It was nice to see that from him. I still want a little a little more physicality out of him. He's got it. He's got that, but I, I, if I can get that kind of scoring and physicality, that's going to be the dude I'm looking for every game. From the 254, Kevin, you told me not to take the day off to mentally prepare. I stand by that. Corey said I should should. I listened to Corey, and the Stars won. Corey is clearly on top. And they're rested up, too, from for the, Friday, you whoo, know? Whoo, you take the day oh, off, you're rested up for Friday. Okay. Yeah. From the, what if they have to do twice as much work to make up for it? Then put that off till Monday. <laughs> Right? From the four six. Get your work nine. done either yesterday, the two days before, or you work on it later on. Huh. Yeah. From the four six nine, the next game is, of course, a must win. Oh, no! Yeah. No, right, stop yelling it. at them, the let's Buffalo get in Wild Wings. Let's get in, let's get in must win mode. I'm, I'm, I'm back to it, all right? I've been there. From yeah. the 2 on 4, on your face, Kevin. Let's go, Stars. <laughs> I mean, you're hosting the Islanders, right? You're hosting the Islanders tomorrow night. Yeah, is so, it the '80s? Yeah. They're not winning the cup. Yeah, well, so that means that means you should be two and zero. That's the expectation. St. Louis and Utah are two and zero right now, and you want to take them down, right? No, I'm not. You want to be better than them? I'm not standings watching in Dude, the second game. You are the biggest standings watcher I know. That's true. So that should let you know you always how inconsequential wanna, like, I think it is right I want to be the front runner. I want to be in the front by 15 games. That is your mentality. I'm surprised at you right now, Kevin. This is disappointing. Grow oh up. God.